Peace. This is Watch for Watch Words Media back at y'all for another round. And fight fans, what an amazing fight we saw on Saturday between David Benavidez and Demetrius Andre. First, I want to give a shout out, say peace to my man Demetrius Andre. We got to give him his credit because, for one, he fought someone that has been highly avoided in David Benavidez. David Benavidez is the boogeyman. And he stepped in there with no hesitation to fight him. And two, we got to give him credit because he was actually doing really good against Benavidez. He did really good. He had a good game plan. He was circling, pivoting. He kept he, he was trying to take away Benavidez's right hand by pivoting to the right. And there was a couple times where you seen he would he would duck and pivot. And as he ducked and pivot, you saw that Benavidez would turn around. And as he duck pivot, Benavidez would turn around and boom. Andre caught him with like a clean shot right there off the turnaround, which was, that's high level, high IQ boxing. So we got to give Andre credit. And I had Andre winning two or three out of those first four rounds. So once again, tremendous job by Andre. He had a good plan. But when you have somebody as big and as imposing as David Benavidez is, it's hard to keep game plans for 12 rounds, for 36 minutes. It's just very hard. When you have a guy like that that can take your punch and just walk through you and is stalking you with some heavy artillery. And that's what he has, man. That's what David Benavidez brings to the table. Mike Tyson called him the Mexican monster for a reason. This is Mike Tyson calling him that. So monster recognized monster, you know? Like he is a terror. And he's a terror because not only... For one, he fights his height. You've heard me say this on my page in the past. Fighters need to fight their height. Prime example is Sebastian Fandora. Sebastian Fandora is six foot seven. He towers over everyone he fights, but he doesn't fight his height. He comes into his opponent. He closes the distance because he wants to mix it up. Instead of being tall, using his jab, and making fighters have to work to get in there. And with Benavidez, you don't get that. Benavidez stands tall. He uses his jab very well. And he throws punches and bunches. And he has a devastating one-two. Where he sets that jab up. He sets that right hand up with the jab. And boom! That right hand comes out of nowhere. And he has an array of punches. Great combination punching. And he has... The age-old, scariest combination of speed and power. That combination is deadly. And he possesses that. Speed and power. And we saw it, man. We saw it on Saturday where he caught Demetrius Andre with a blinding right hook that made Demetrius Andre's eyes light up. And from that point forward, when he knocked him down... The fight was never the same. It became a complete one-sided landslide from that point forward where Benavides eventually had Andre's corner call the fight a few rounds later. But congratulations to David Benavides for yet another great performance against a high-quality multiple division champion who was undefeated in Demetrius Andre. So what this does now, this absolutely sets up a must, must happen fight between David Benavidez and Canelo Alvarez. There's no more ducking, no more excuses. We've heard the now infamous interview with Canelo where he said, I don't fight Mexican fighters. You asking me about Benavidez. Benavidez hasn't fought nobody. The well, only person he fought is Durrell. I'm not avoiding him. Well, now... Well, he was avoiding him because Demet um, listen, Benavidez has been Canelo's mandatory for the past two years. Two years he's had to fight Benavidez. And somehow this man has been walking. He's been making his way through every loophole in order to not fight Benavidez. So that was one of his excuses. Benavidez has fought nobody. So can't use that excuse anymore because Benavidez has defeated one of the 
best boxes in boxing today, and that's Demetrius Andrade. And he not only beat him, but he beat him very convincingly by knocking him out, having his corner stop the fight. So there's no excuse anymore. 2024, David Benavidez versus Canelo Alvarez. No more excuses. So let's get this fight happening. Benavidez is ready. He's been ready. He's been calling Canelo Alvarez out to, to a point where he even said, you know what, I'm going to stop calling him out because he's not responding to me. So now there's no choice. There's no choice. He holds that WBC. It's time for Canelo to make that move. And let's get this to happen Cinco de Mayo, man. If that man don't fight Benavidez by next September, he is exactly what I told y'all he is. The most overrated media-made sensation in boxing history. I'm telling y'all, don't be surprised if he doesn't take the fight. I think he will now because he's back to a corner. He is back to a corner. There's no way he could avoid him now. He's a PBC fighter just like... Benavidez is a PBC fighter. He's got two more fights on the contract. And Benavidez just called him out in front of everybody. In front of everybody after a huge win against a multiple weight class champion that was undefeated in Andre. He called him out for the world. And all the crowd, he asked the crowd, do you want to see me versus Canelo? The crowd's going crazy. There's no way he can avoid fighting Benavidez now. Canelo has to take this fight. And if he doesn't take it in these next two fights that he has left on his contract in either May or September, I need y'all to come back here and drop those comments. Drop some bars on me and let me know you was right. This guy is nothing but media made hype. On that note, I'm Wise for Wise Words Media. Peace.